When we are suffering with mental health issues, whether it's stress-related or more serious emotions such as grieving or depression, all feelings are valid. In today's video, I wanted to emphasize the importance of accepting and understanding how you feel and realizing that it's important. I don't want anyone to be in a position in which they're justifying not getting help because there's people worse off than them or that it's not worth the professional's time. Your feelings are important, you are important, so is subscribing. I think that's a little bit cheap. There's often a large hurdle in mental health, especially in men's mental health, in which we compare ourselves to others when validating the importance of how we feel. And I wanted to talk briefly about why I personally think this might happen, and I'm not trying to explain a really complex socio-psychological concept in this short video. I just wanted to give my opinion and possibly some tips and tricks to try and help overcome it. And I'm assuming if you've watched the video before or if you're still watching now you might want to hear what I want to say so here we go. Right, talking about feelings is really hard. It forces us to emotionally and cognitively relive experiences that are perhaps quite negative ones which can be really daunting and really difficult to do especially if you've been repressing those feelings for a very long time. And I think personally we either consciously or subconsciously downplay the severity of whatever we're experiencing so we don't have to do this. It's why often talking therapy or any therapy in general can be really tough and a lot of people shy away from it because it is so emotionally draining. And I completely understand that. I didn't get help for what I was experiencing for about two years. So all I can say to this is be honest with yourself. Sit down and think about what you're experiencing, how it's really affecting your life. If you're going home and feeling down every single day or even most days, it's clearly having a deeper psychological impact than you realize consciously and you need to get help for this. And perhaps talking to someone about it because often if someone or at least more than one person is saying, oh my God, get some help, then it can probably be a good indicator of, I should probably get some help. It really is tough to face your feelings, especially with a lot of the stigmas attached to it these days. But the things that are challenging, the things that make us work hard and continuously put in effort are the things that reap the best rewards. That feeling of facing those inner demons that you have, those psychological issues that you've been faced with for so long and beating them is brilliant. It's pretty close. And I think that another thing that stops us getting help is we compare ourselves to others. And this is a really interesting concept in my opinion. Often we'll see other people perhaps dealing with a lot of stresses or having a lot of things going on and they don't appear to be struggling with their mental health. So then we go, I can't be depressed, I haven't got all this going on and they're fine. But you really don't know what people's experiences are. You are the only person that knows what you're going through. I'm the only person that knows what I've been through and am going through now. And as much as we talk, as much as we communicate, as much as you think you know someone, you can't fully understand it. Mental health is so unique. It's dependent on the so many different characteristics, including the person themselves, what they've got going on, how they've been brought up, what their opinion is on mental health in general. There's so many confounding variables that make it so unique. And it's a really complex issue, the issue of comparing ourselves to others. Because we naturally do it as humans. We naturally establish ourselves within a group and see where we sort of rank next to people. I think the distinguishing factor is the sort of processes you're going through when you see someone else having an issue. So when you perceive that they've got a problem, do you either realise that yours isn't really a problem and it's not something to worry about and that you're perfectly suitable for coping with it? Or do you downplay the severity because of what they're going through? It's whatever you put the focus on. If you're focusing on your problem and realising it's not an issue, then that may be a good thing. But then if you're focusing on their problem and the fact that they've got these issues, you're ignoring what you're going through. You're not allowing yourself to process it. It's a very fine line and it's really hard to distinguish your cognitive processes, especially if you are struggling with your mental health. So I think just honest reflection. I'll give you a metaphor because you know imagery and that. It's like when you're at the gym and you're benching because big muscle gain season and big numbers, of course, because there's only absolute gym lad beasts around here. And you're about to finish your set because you're tired. You need a break. Your body needs to recover. But then you see some absolutely wham guy sitting next to you and you look at him and he's just repping it out. He's lifting heavy. He's doing more reps and he doesn't seem like he's tired. Does that mean you don't deserve a rest? Does that mean you need to carry on with your set until you're completely exhausted and have no energy left? No, you usually just accept that they may be better at coping with this weight, they may be more trained, they may be doing it for longer. So you adapt to how you feel, and when it comes to mental health, I think we can adopt the same sort of approach. 
We see people going through these struggles or lifting that weight or that burden. And we need to consider they may have been dealing with it a long time and they may be better off dealing with it than you are, for example. The reality is that your body needs a break and pushing it any further is likely to do more damage than good. Now, whilst it may be a motivating factor to keep going because there's a guy next to you and you look at him and you go, oh, I want to be that wham. You can't ignore what your body is saying to you and often people don't adopt this approach when it comes to mental health. Your body or your mind, if you want to talk about it like that, is telling you there's an issue and it's something you need to deal with and process and not just ignore. Because if you keep pushing yourself, if you keep lifting that weight and ignoring what your body's telling you, it's going to do damage. Someone who's been struggling with their mental health for a long time or someone who's been benching for a long time equally, they'll be more adapted to overcoming the barrier, to pushing that weight. They may have the best equipment possible, they may have a motivating factor to help them keep going, but you may not have these things at this point. They may even use substances or drugs to boost their ability to lift these weights or deal with their mental health problems. You don't know all of the situational factors that come into play, and so comparing yourself in a way that downplays the severity of what you're feeling, what your body is telling you, is so detrimental. Use it as motivation, think, I want to get there but also realize the fact that they were likely in your spot at one point as well. And uh, I'm not saying creatine's a good antidepressant, by the way. What I'm trying to say is that while someone can appear worse off, but be able to cope with it better, it doesn't mean that you should downplay the severity of what you're going through or what your body is telling you. You can never know their cognitive processes, their, their background, their history, their ability of coping with these mental health issues. And regardless if someone's stronger than you, if someone's better than you at coping with their mental health or benching heavy weights, you don't need to be the strongest in the room. You need to accept who you are, what you're feeling, what your body's telling you, what your mind is telling you, and deal with it. And the issue is we often compare ourselves because we think everything's a competition. You don't need to be better than the next person. You don't need to be stronger or fitter or better at coping with your mental health. You just need to do the best you can. And whilst you may feel weak or vulnerable when you're doing this, it's the strong thing to do and you'll, you'll come off better. You, you do. The main advice I can give is be honest with yourself. Don't half-heart it. Give it time. Trust the process and you'll come off better. Anyway, that's me. I hope everyone's enjoyed. Remember, everyone matters and everyone's emotions and feelings matter. Whether you're stressed with exams or going through some serious things in your life your emotions matter don't worry about other people if you view others as motivators brilliant but if it downplays what you're experiencing that's not a healthy habit to have feel free to reach out to me because i'm trying to help anyone that i can you know good guy over here and yeah i hope everyone's well and i will see you all later bye bye